Good morning, UCCMCC of the Valley, and happy Sunday. We welcome you this Sunday as we learn about the shepherds. Shine, Jesus, shine.
God, we come before you this day, and we, we thank you for this season. We thank you for the reason for this season. We thank you that we're all here to worship, to praise you, and like the shepherds, we get to learn about your greatness and your coming to this earth for us. We praise you today, God. We give you this service, God. We turn it over to you from beginning to end, every part of it. Work with us, God. Let your spirit move in here and flow in like never before. For the word says where the spirit is, there is liberty. And where two or three are gathered, you are there. And we invite you here and we thank you for your presence. In the precious name of your son, Jesus, our friend. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for that blessing, and <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you, sometimes it, when you, it's said that when you're doing good work, the devil starts meddling, and I tell you what, those little tech uh, gremlins have been meddling in our equipment, so I just want to thank you for finding us this morning if you're watching us live. I, I also want to let you know if you're watching us right now on, uh, on Facebook or on Zoom, we will be rebroadcasting our uh, service this afternoon on YouTube. Um, you know, it just is what it is, but things weren't perfect when Jesus uh, was born, neither are they now. But in, in saying that, I do want to give a huge shout out and thank to our uh, tech department, uh, to uh, Chuck, Seb, and Jeff, who continues to make stuff happen. Uh, I also, just because I know that there might be some who are concerned later, where is Paul? Uh, he's fine. He lost his keys. So <laughs> he just wasn't able to make it here on time today. So just uh, we're going to pray that the gremlins who steal keys um, will bring them back for him. Uh, so with that, I just uh, want to welcome you. I'm the Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois, and senior pastor here on behalf of the incredible staff, uh, volunteer and paid alike. I just want to welcome you here. Uh, we have a very, very uh, blessed week as well as a blessed service for you. I want to just let you know of a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, this week we are going to have the opportunity to begin to uh, uh, bring our first gratitude baskets to a local hospital here in town um, to uh, the COVID units uh, to say thank you for their hard work. Uh, I'm going to invite you as well to please continue uh, to send in, and if you haven't done it, do it in the morning, uh, your thank you cards that we will pass along to healthcare workers. We will, after we do it here in Los Angeles, we're going to replicate it in New Mexico, Arizona, and Northern California, where we have um, groups of members. And so, indeed, we are a church without borders. So we're going to be able to spread ministry, uh, not just here, but wherever we touch. But a, also a ministry that is happening at this physical location, I just want to um, let you guys know that people have already, without publicizing it yet, uh, been able to start coming by and utilizing the food from the fridge and pantry. Uh, that's part of LA Community Fridges. Uh, 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 partnered, the people who partnered with us and brought this to our attention was Brighton High, uh, Brighton Academy. Uh, they are a school in Burbank and their student council brought this to our attention. Uh, they had the funding, we had the place, so we've partnered with um, Brighton School. So a huge shout out to them. Uh, it was covered in local, um, uh, uh, local news uh, recently, and so I'll be posting that for you. Uh, so what else is going on? We do have coffee time on Zoom that is immediately following this. In whatever format you are watching us on this service, please uh, let us know in whatever chat uh, features there are to say hi so we know uh, that you're with us. I also want to let you know that I'm going to invite you now or anytime during service uh, to please make your financial donation and offering um, to the church. Uh, the link was sent earlier. If you did not receive that, you can always go to our homepage, uh, our webpage, mccuccv.com, and you're going to see the, a festively decorated Donate Now button. So that's more than one reason to go to our, to our website. Um, so please consider uh, giving your donation now. We're also going to be, uh, I, I really want to be able to say thank you to our incredible staff who is continuing to make things happen here. You can make that love offering as well. When you go to the Donate Now, just select Agape or Love Offering, and we'll hope to be giving them a blessing from you 
by the uh, end of the year. So uh, the only last thing is that we do have our Christmas Eve service. It's going to be at 7 p.m. on YouTube, barring any technical difficulties. Uh, but you should find us 7 o'clock on, um, on, uh, on YouTube. So you'll get information about that. And that's 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. I think that's all the announcements, except we have really exciting guest uh, who's going to be singing in a few minutes. So. I'm going to just have you wait to find out who that is. So don't go away except to go get what you need for communion right now. And remember that in this world that needs it so much, that peace begins with you. Now, friends, I invite you uh, to go ahead and take your candle, your Advent candle, and let us, uh, you can get your uh, liturgy if you had it. This morning, we're reading joy. Thank you, God, for bringing your message of hope, peace, love, and especially joy to all people. As we light our Advent candle this morning, we remember that we feel joy, not just because Jesus was born in a manger, but because he is born within our hearts and lives. We are overflowing with joy, knowing you fill us and guide us and will never leave us no matter what is happening around us. We thank you. Amen and amen. And now for our reading. Our reading today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20, from the New International Reader's Version. Listen to what the Spirit has for you today. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night, and they were taking care of their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and divine glory shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. They were praising God. They said, May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those God is pleased with on earth. The angels left and went into heaven. Then the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which God has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in a manger. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. They reported what the angel had said about this child. All who heard it 
were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary kept all these things like a secret treasure in her heart. She thought about them over and over. The shepherds returned. They gave glory and praise to God. Everything they had seen and heard was just as they had been told. This now ends our reading. May God open these words to our hearts and to our minds. And I'd like to introduce um, humbly our special guest with us. As you know, we very rarely are doing anything with anybody live except the uh, few things that uh, uh, take place. Except we made an exception uh, safely, of course, for our next offering to come to you today. Uh, many of you know him and uh, by many names. I know him as Adrian, a friend, an incredible musician, an incredible man of God. He's about to bring to you an offering that he recorded recently, and you know, in the midst of COVID and quarantine, amazing things can happen. He worked with his producer and all of his uh, team to bring together what I have to say is probably one of the best songs that I have heard him do. He will tell you a little bit more, but you will hear it in the song. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to bring to you Adrian Christian, Midnight Will Be Clear. And now we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Oh, right now. Christmas Eve in the past He would go to midnight mass He'd sing songs of praise With gin on his breath His mind in the haze Not a day went by He didn't need to get higher The taste of each drink As sweet as the sound of the choir his favorite song of the season is always ringing in his ears. His New Year's resolution, he put down the bottle, it's been almost a year. His Christmas will be the first one in a long time. Midnight will be clear. Midnight will be clear. Said, Lord, help me, please. As soon as he did, he felt peace in his soul. On this holy day, he'd sing that glorious song of all. Here's resolution. 
Myself, and actually I said, is that really you? And indeed, it was. I, I want to thank you again, Adrian, for blessing us with, the, uh, with having that um, song here for the first time. It's been on his uh, YouTube channel, and it's for sale, etc. I sent out earlier today, uh, this morning, and we'll resend it, the link to... Uh, uh, to his page so that you can see it again as well as to purchase it uh, if you would like. So such a blessing indeed. Thank you. It was really good to see you in person. I kept looking to the monitor and I'm like, oh no, he's really here. I can see him across the sanctuary. So what a blessing indeed. You know, midnight will be clear. What a message. You know, I can do a whole sermon on that and I'm going to do part of my sermon on that actually. You know, in case you missed some of the lyrics, the message of that song was about someone who, you know, for the first time in a long time, midnight, Christmas midnight was clear because he had said yes to taking a step, you know, that, that God was with him, that Jesus was with him to take that step that he needed to one day at a time so that indeed not only could he see life clearly, but indeed that midnight could be seen clear for the first time in a long time. The person with the grace of God was able to take a new step. And that is what it's all about. You know, we heard today part, the, another part of the story of Jesus coming into the world and, and, and this part of the story is that Jesus had just been born and then the message went out. The angels went out. And they made it known that something special had happened. Something that it was amazing had happened. And they brought this message not to the politicians, not to the religious leaders. The angels didn't bring it to them. The angels brought it to those who were on the outskirts of town. God chose to announce the birth of the child of Jesus to the shepherds. You know, even though, it, I mean, these were the essential workers of the time. They were essential because raising sheep and then allowing that, those sheep to be used for food or to sacrifice or their, for the wool, for clothing, they were really, really, really important. But yet those who cared for them, who worked, if you will, the second and the third shift of the day, because they really went to work in the afternoon at twilight and throughout the night, was this group of people who, in their society, while essential workers weren't necessarily held to the highest esteem. I mean, think about it. Without them, where would the food be? And without them, where would the clothing come from? Without them, the wolves would be more filled than the people in town. Essential workers, yet they were, this job was usually given to the youngest of a family. It was the youngest of the family who was sent out to be the shepherds, not the firstborn. 
Remember David? Remember David's story when he was a little guy? He was a shepherd tending the flocks while his older brothers were out fighting the war. It was the youngest, it was the least of these who was not only shepherding, but also would be called forth and lifted up to be the great king. I think we can relate to that, can't we? I think we can relate to the fact that many of us have thankless jobs, many of us work the night shift, are essential workers, or we are looked upon not with great esteem, but, you know, kind of like, oh, look askance. You know, think about it. You know, when this whole COVID thing started back in March and we were told that only essential workers could go to work, you know, who was that? Yes, of course, it was police and fire department and healthcare workers, but it was also the grocery clerks, the street sweepers, the people who were harvesting in the fields, those who were tending to the meals that we would eat. And unfortunately, this group of people has been hardest hit by the pandemic that we are all collectively experiencing. Many of them are you and me, wondering is there going to be any more support or will they lose their job, their home, their source of food, their source of livelihood. Many of them have lost their job and have lost their health care, which really is not a good thing in the midst of a pandemic. But friends, I believe that when we look at the message that God is giving to us through the shepherds, might as well be the message that God is giving to us through the essential workers in our society today. And that message is, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what circumstance you're in, God needs you, and God is speaking through you. Just like the gentleman that was sung about in the song who, you know, we don't know what he did for a living, but, you know, he had hit his lowest bottom. But it was with the grace of God that he was able to see once again. And just like the shepherds, our essential workers are telling us, that God needs to be reborn in this world again, or at least remembered, or how about just found again? Or maybe we know where Jesus is but haven't visited him in a long time. I think, you know, I know I can tell you for myself just a half an hour ago, I was like, eh, you know, the season can cause chaos and, you know, with technology it can cause even more chaos. You know, 45 minutes ago I was like, oh, are we going to even be able to have people see our service today because of technology issues? And then I had to breathe. I literally, I literally stood in the back while the beginning songs were sung and just breathed and prayed and was reminded that it doesn't matter what's going on, we need to allow God to be born anew this moment, this day. So it is, friends, that the shepherds are saying to us, we're important, all of us. To those of you who might feel like the outcast, for those of you who might go, am I worthy enough? You know, I, I'm just a grocery clerk, or I just bag food, or I just drive a truck, or I just do this or that. I want to today remind you and lift you up to remind you that it was you who God came to first to proclaim to you, go and see something incredible. Experience this. Experience the love of God born as a babe in a manger. You are worthy. And we all need to see that hope and joy once again. It was a sacrifice for those shepherds to leave the flocks. 
Some of them had to stay behind because, goodness gracious, they wouldn't be, go be going back to find just one lost sheep. They would have gone back to find all the whole herd. So some of them stayed behind, I'm certain, and others went and followed what the angels said and proclaimed to them, and that was to find this innocence, this light, this star, this brightness, this joy that would be the Savior. And so it was that they went and they followed that star and they found him. This little baby wrapped up. I wonder if he was crying or was he sleeping and all cute? Was he cooing? What was he doing? I don't know. Being a baby. And these shepherds came in their messiness. They didn't have to clean up to find God. Just like if right now you are... At the bottom of the bottle, you don't have to clean up to find God because God will find you. If you are in the deepest despair right now, don't worry. You don't have to be happy. God is there with you. If you are grieving this season, if you are angst because you don't have family or friends with you and you're not able to be with them, it's okay. God is with you. If you are grieving the loss of lives, you don't have to be all better for God to hold you. Just stop. Just stop. You know, I don't think it's a coincidence that tomorrow is going to be the rebirth, if you will, of the Bethlehem star. Seen last time 800 years ago, and guess what was happening? A pandemic was happening. The Black Death was happening. And in the midst of that Black Death, the Bethlehem star came, Jupiter and Saturn aligned, so bright, so brilliant, that astrologers from afar came and followed that star to see what was going on. That star that was so bright that led the shepherds to the manger to see the babe. And that is happening tonight in the middle of a pandemic, coming back to the world. In this time of everything that's going on around us, all of this is happening, and all of this is happening. I'm gonna invite you, if you can, to go find that star, to see it, and if you can't see it, Imagine it and receive it and know that the brilliance and that the hope and the love and the peace and the joy of God is waiting for you. It's the only way we're going to continue to make it through. And more than that, once we receive the blessing of being in that presence, I'm going to challenge you to realize that those shepherds, who were the outcasts who came to Jesus in the manger, even though Jesus was born the son of a carpenter, he actually really led his life as a shepherd of God. Because how many times did we hear the stories about Jesus being the shepherd, looking for the lost lamb, looking for you and me? How many times did Jesus go forth and in the imagery and the, the art that is depicted is usually and oftentimes of Jesus with a lamb over his shoulders, finding the lost one and bringing it back. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not weep. I share that with you because did those lowly shepherds realize what an effect they might have had on this babe that he actually grew up and became shepherds, a shepherd to God's flock. So you and I, all of us, doesn't matter what position we hold, whether it's wealthy or politician or clergy person or unemployed or mom or dad or essential worker of any kind, God's calling you and me right now out of our field to take a break for a moment, 
to go and find the babe in the manger. God is calling us because you and I are worthy enough. And God is calling us because God wants to say, I've got this. As bad as the situation is, I want you to know that hope is being born, that peace is being born, that love is being born, that joy is being born. I, I put in my newsletter this week, you know that, uh, you know that song, uh, Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Well, you know, I don't feel so jolly. But I do feel joy filled. And I do feel filled with gratitude. And I do feel filled with love and peace and absolutely filled with hope. Because somewhere along the line, I remembered to look up and to see the star. And somewhere along the line, I took a moment to be silent and hear the angels sing. Go to the manger and see the Christ child born anew. So this week, as we journey towards Christmas, however that will look for us, of course, joining us at 7 o'clock Thursday night, but however Christmas is going to look for you, I can guarantee you one thing. It will include God born anew in each of us. May that be your peace that brings you into this week. Blessings upon blessings. Midnight will still be clear. Amen. <laughs>
Today we offer up our prayers as a community, a community committed to following the example of the shepherds and shine joy on this world. I invite you to join in in saying, God, hear our prayers after each prayer. We thank you, gracious God, for this community. Hear us, O God. God, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for all those affected by strife and unrest in this world, especially for those who are experiencing pain and sorrow during the holidays. For some, it reminds them of the death of a loved one or just anxiety of the situation, financial situation that they may be in at this time. So we like to remember those folks and lift them up. Hear us, O oh God. God, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of this world, including our president-elect and the vice president-elect, for the leaders of our denominations around the world at this time of the year. Hear us, O oh God. God, hear our prayer. We lift up the prayers offered here today. Prayers of celebration for the appointment of Pete Buttigieg to the new administration's cabinet as chair of the Department of Transportation. God of miracles, hear our prayers. For Rosie's friend Jenny, who is still in hospice, peace for them both. God of transitions, hear our prayers. Prayers of gratitude from Rosie as well, as her brother, who has cancer in Seattle, is doing very well and living life to its fullest. God of joy, hear our prayers. Prayers of gratitude from Penny that the Electoral College process went smoothly. God of new beginnings, hear, hear our, prayers. our prayers. Prayers from Deb for her friend in Indiana, whose sister's grandsons passed away. They were only teenagers. Mm. God of mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for Reverend Pat's Aunt Susie and Uncle Ernie, who passed away 13 days apart from each other over the past two weeks. Prayers for the children, Jeannie and Ernest. God of compassion, hear our prayers. We have two online prayers this morning from Nancy Ann. Prayers lifted up for those who have COVID and their families, and that the vaccine will help to end this terrible pandemic. And Sean thanks God and prayers from all of us. He got the application to the union for his upcoming job, hmm. and it looks like he's going to be hired at this time. Wonderful. Prayers for Sean. Thank you. Prayers of gratitude for all those healing from cancer, for one, for one who found out that no chemo will be necessary, hallelujah, after their surgery. Prayers of gratitude also for another who is beginning their radiation this week, and praises that only a tiny spot was found after their surgery as well. Great physician, hear our prayers. Prayers from Ed, who is still practicing his gratitude and listening to that still small voice which led him to go and get tested. Blessed continue to be with him. God of healing, hear our, hear prayers. our prayers. Prayers from Stefan, who has lost a number of friends and family members from COVID. God of comfort, hear our prayers. I'd like to add a prayer also for my wife, Leslie, who after a week since being tested positive, I have heard no negative news from the care home where she is at. So I am assuming with the most of hope that it was either a false positive or she is asymptomatic, but in either case doing well. Hmm. And prayers from Stephen, Oh no, excuse me, prayers of gratitude for all those who are finding their way 
to recovery. One step at a time. God of new life. Hear, hear our, prayers. our prayers. Prayers for families dealing with distress of all kinds this time of year, especially for those who are struggling financially with their health and their emotions. God of comfort, wrap your arms around all of them. And we have an additional online prayer from Sean. Prayers for his friend Kevin Turner in Oakland, who's been diagnosed with COVID and is in the hospital recovering. Prayers also for his partner and an old friend of Sean's, Kit Cotton, for his strength and his value in his relationship with Kevin. God of healing, hear our yeah. prayers. At this time, I would invite you to say the names of others you would like to lift up in prayer today. My wife, Leslie, as always. Hear us, O oh God. God, hear our prayer. For these and all the prayers that are on our hearts, both spoken and unspoken, God, hear our prayers as we sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Creator, whom we are a part of, whom part of, Hallowed be thy name, thy dominion come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Are you ready to follow the example of shepherds and shine joy on this world? Are you ready to celebrate, even if you are not entirely sure of what you are celebrating, but just know joy is present? Let us go to God in a time of silence and open our hearts to such an adventure. Blessed assurance, we are a forgiven people who can shine on this world, even through our imperfections. Let us go forth committed to allow God's joy to shine through us and onto others in this hurting world. God dwells in you. And also in you. Come to the table with thankful hearts. We open our hearts to God and to one another. It is from a place of open hearts that we sing endless praises to you, God, goddess, source of life, creator of beauty, lover of humankind. Therefore, we praise you, singing our voices with the angels and saints, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your names. Santo, 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 mi corazón te adora, mi corazón te sabe decir, Santo eres Dios. Oh, My heart is 
Christ, on that night in which you were betrayed, you gave us this meal. Let us now remember together that night. That night on which you took the bread and you blessed it and broke it and gave it to us saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And in a like manner, you then took the cup and said, drink all of you. This is my blood, my life essence. This is my covenant with you, a covenant of forgiveness. God, we thank you for this meal. May these elements of bread and juice renew us so that the inner beacons of hope, peace, love, and joy you have placed within our hearts shine on for all the world to see. Amen. It is now time to gather up those elements we asked you to do before. The host and the juice. It doesn't have to be exactly that we have here, but whatever you have handy, because it is the spirit behind it, not so much what they actually are, to join in communion with all of us together. So we now invite you to take part in communion with the items gathered together. Say a prayer with whomever is with you or just silently between you and God. And now, join us. Blessings of this communion should bind us together at this time of year in peace and harmony, love, joy, everything that Christ brought into our lives to make it richer, more loving, more global, more compassionate. Amen. And now for our And now for our closing song, <laughs> we're going to invite back forward uh, Adrian for once again, because I really want you to be able to receive the blessing if you hadn't heard it earlier or if you got on late. And just because it's an amazing message, uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, as an encore, Adrian Christian singing Midnight Will Be Clear. Oh, 
into this week, uh, my prayer for you is that indeed you'll know that even if there's a little fog in the sky, that midnight will be clear, for God is with us all, all the time. Follow the star, come back and see us Thursday, 7 p.m., have your candle, and we'll be with you. Blessings upon blessings, in all the names that are holy, in Jesus' name, amen.